Hello everyone, this is Dipta Das. Today I'll be trying to learn sparse table. Along the way, I'll be sharing my thought process. So I'll be trying to learn as well, and it will be beneficial for you as well. So let's start. Let's have a look at the structure of the sparse table. So we'll be given an array. So let's say we're given this array, and we'll have to answer some queries. So we'll have to find out the minimum value from A1 to A3. So the minimum from A1 to A3 is 2, and the minimum from A5 to A8 is 3. Now we can easily find the minimum in any array, in any range with a simple loop. It will take linear time, but can we do any better? So what we will do is we process the array in the following manner. First, we find the minimum in each array sub range of length 2. So from this, so for this length, the minimum is going to be 1. For this length, the minimum is 2. So for this range, the minimum will also be 2 and so on. Next, we find the minimum in the range of length 4. So for this range, for this portion, the minimum is going to be 2. Sorry, the minimum is going to be 1. Then for this range, the minimum is going to be 2. Then for this range, the minimum will be 3 and so on. So we'll keep doing this for each power of 2 smaller than or equal to the length of the array. So far, the array we're given has a length of 9. If we find the values of each power of 2, so it will be 1, 2 to the power 1 will be 2, 2 to the power 2 will give us 4, then 8, then 16. Now 16 exceeds 9, so we'll be dealing up to 8. So the max maximum range of the sub array that we'll be dealing with is going to be 8. Now we store the results in a two dimensional array. Let's call the array table. Now table of ij means the minimum in the sub range of length to the power i starting from the position j. So let's have a look at the example. For this one, table of 1, 5. So 5 means I'll start from the index 5. So this is the index we'll be starting from and 1 represents the length. So the length will be 2 to the power 1. So the length will be 2. So this is the length we are talking about. The minimum in this length or in this range is 5. So we'll be storing 5 in table of 1, 5. Now if we are talking about table of 2 and 0, so it means that we'll be starting from the index 0. So it will start from index 0. And the length will be 2 to the power 2. So the length will be 4. So this is the length we are talking about. The smallest in this range is 1. So we'll be keeping, we'll be storing 1 in table of 2, 0. Now we have already seen that we'll have to find out the powers of 2. Now if our input array is of length n, then we need to know what is the largest power of 2 p such that 2 to the power p is less than or equal to n. We have already seen that the length of the array that the length of the array that were given was 9 and we decided that 8 was the largest 8 was the length of the largest array that we were going to use. So for 8 the power of 2 was 3. So 3 is the largest power of that we were going to use so we'll have to find out that p or that power now this piece of code will help us find that out now we have an array locks now locks of i will return me a will return me p such that to the p is less than or equal to i so if i say locks of 16 so it will return me 4 because 2 to the power 4 is less than or equal to 16 or if i say locks of 17 it will still return me 4 because 2 to the power 4 is less than or equal to 17 now let's build the table itself we'll build it in an increasing order of powers of 2 now notice that when computing table of ij we deal with the range 2 to the power i because this is i so we'll be computing uh, we'll be working with length of 2 to the power i so you can reuse the computation that we did for the length of 2 to the power i minus 1 that's why we're going for an increasing order of powers of 2 now it will all make sense in a minute so it is a formula that we're given so we can actually derive this formula so let's say table of 2 3 so we'll be starting from the index 3 so this is the index we'll be starting from and the length is 2 to the power 2 so the length will be 4 so this is the length we'll be working on and we'll have to find out the minimum in that range now we already said that that we'll be doing this in an increasing order of powers of 2 so when we will be working with length of 4 then we know that for sure we have all the results of length of 2 so we know the result for this portion and we know the result for this portion now the result for this portion was 3 the result for this portion is, was 5 so the end result is going to be the minimum of these two portions which is 3 and 3 is the correct answer so if we are given 
table of ij the result will be minimum of the first portion for the first portion uh, if we have a look at it the first portion starts from the index tree itself so for the first portion the index will need not change so the index will be j itself now what about the length of for the smaller portion now the length will be reduced by half so if the length was 4 the length will be now 2 or the length will be reduced by 1 power of 2 if the length was 2 to the power 2 then the length will be 2 to the power 2 minus 1 or 2 so if the if it was i then it should be i minus 1 we'll have to just subtract 1 from i for the next portion it will also be the same for the next portion the length will also be reduced by half so it will be i minus 1 but for the second portion the starting position will change we'll have to take two steps to the right so we can also say we'll have to take size of the sub array steps to the right now size of this sub array is what the size of this sub array is going to be 2 to the power 1 or we could say 2 to the power 2 minus 1 or we could say 2 to the power if i was the original size of the first array then it will be 2 to the power i minus 1 so we'll have to take j plus 2 to the power i minus 1 steps to the right so it will be j plus 2 to the power i minus 1 so this is this portion right here this portion right here this is just the size of the sub array so this is pretty much all the basics about sparse tree now about the logs i didn't actually skim through the code so let's have a look at the code now log of one will be zero because to the power zero will return me one so we'll be starting from two up to n and log of i will be log of i divided by two plus one so that's the formula we'll be using so we have logs and we have formula if you put these two together then we'll be able to build the sparse table let's have a look at the code of the sparse table as well and for the coding part i'll not go thoroughly as we do have the basics i think we'll be able to figure this out so anyway let's have a look so for the outer loop i represents the power of two so it will start from zero up to log of n so for the previous example the length of the array was 9 so log of 9 will return us 3 so it will start from 0 and then add 3 now the current length is going to be 1 left shift i 2 to the power i is going to be the current length or we could also write it as 1 left shift uh, 1 left shift i then we start scanning through the array now j will start from 0 uh, for example let's say if the value of i is 2 then the value of current length will be 4 because 2 to the power 2 will give us 4 so we'll be scanning through the array like this so this is the going the 4 is going to be the range of the sub arrays so for any given array let's say for this array so this is going to be the starting index and this is going to be the ending index the ending index is going to be j plus the current length right so j plus current length has to be less than or equal to the size of the array now if the current length is 1 then we'll put a of ij itself in the table for example if the current length is 1 for example if the current length is 1 this is the length we are talking about so 2 itself is going to be the smallest of all the elements in the sub range else we will just put the formula table of i j is going to be minimum of table of i minus 1 j comma table of i minus 1 plus current length divided by 2 instead of current length divided by 2 we could also write 2 to the power i minus 1 or we could write 1 left shift i minus 1 so this is how we build our sparse table now we build the sparse table now it's time for us to answer some queries so let's say we're given this query l is 1 and r is 6 left is 1 and right is 6 so we we'll have to find out the minimum value inside this range 1 and 6 so the length is going to be r minus l plus 1 so this is just the formula of finding length of any uh, sub array so in this case the length is going to be 6 now if we find out logs of length so logs of length is actually logs of 6 so it will return us 2 so 2 to the power 2 will give us 4 so 4 is the smallest power of 2 sorry 2 is the smallest power of 2 that does not exceed 6 now next what we need to do is take two sub arrays of length 4 now the first sub array will start from the from the index l itself and the length will be 4 and the second sub array will end at the index r and the length will also be 4 
and we'll take the minimum of both of these two arrays and it will return us the result. So this is the function we're giving left and right. We'll have to find out the length which is r minus l plus 1 and find out the logs of that length which will be p. Then we find the length. So length will be 2 to the power p or 1 left shift p. Then we need to find out the minimum of these two arrays. For the first one it will be table of p because remember p is the uh, p is the power of 2 so it will be p and it will start from l for the second table the length will also be the same so it will be p and it will start from this index now how to find out this index if this is r then we'll have to take 1 2 3 steps to the left so we could say 6 minus 3 or we could say 6 minus the length was 4 the length of there was 4 minus 1 or we could say 6 minus 4 plus 1 so this is the index the second it will be starting from so we could say 6 minus 4 is the length right so it will be 6 is actually the 6 is actually the right index so r minus length of the array plus 1 now this function will return us the minimum in any given range. Now let's have a look at the time complexity. For any array of length n, there are log n plus 1 parts of 2 smaller than or equal to n. Now for each of them, we can assume that we are processing the array in linear time. So to find the minimum in all sub-ranges, it totally, it, it gives us in total a complexity of big of n log n time. So the out for the outer loop, we are getting log n plus 1 time complexity and for the inner loop we are getting a linear time complexity in total for the pre-computation we are getting big of n log n time now once that pre-computation is done we are get getting the minimum in any range in a constant time so this will be all for this video and one thing i do need to mention is that all the articles that i'm going through and all the articles that i'll be going through in future about sparse trouble i'm taking all of those links and articles from this forum posted by our respectable teacher Mr. Sharif Shibli and I'll be making sure to put it down below in the description section.